In the 2018 movie Hunter Killer, a Russian warship suddenly opens fire, and its dense close-range firepower successfully intercepts several missiles. The firing in the movie is done by ship-mounted close-in weapon systems, specifically Gatling-style close-in weapon systems. The typical representative of such firepower is the US MK-15 Phalanx close-in weapon system. This system was developed by Raytheon specifically to counter missiles. Similar systems include the Goalkeeper system developed by the Netherlands and the CIWS-2 currently being developed by South Korea. Currently, the close-range weapons on South Korean warships are still the Goalkeeper and Raytheon's MK-15. According to the South Korean military, by 2026, the CIWS-2 will fully replace the aforementioned systems and become the primary close-range defense weapon on South Korean destroyers and even aircraft carriers. It is said that the CIWS-2 utilizes an active electronically scanned array radar developed by South Korea, which has stronger detection capabilities and more precise accuracy than the mechanical radar used in the goalkeeper system. The CIWS-2 features a 7-barrel Gatling-style cannon with a caliber of 30 mm, capable of firing approximately 4,200 rounds per minute. It can engage accurately guided munitions from enemy forces at a maximum distance of 2 kilometers. In terms of engaging enemy aircraft, the maximum combat range is approximately 3.5 kilometers. When comparing the rate of fire and defense range, the CIWS-2 falls short of the MK-15 close-in weapon system. However, since South Korea has decided to replace the American-made close-range weapons with them, there must be reasons behind this decision. In any case, regardless of the changes in this type of weapon, two core components are essential, the rate of fire of the dense array of close-in weapon systems and the advanced capabilities of the radar for detection and targeting. Once the close-in weapon systems need to be activated, it indicates that the missile threat has breached the last line of defense. The close-in weapon systems is like a goalkeeper in football, being the last line of defense standing in front of the goal after the opposing forward breaks through. Taking the MK-15 close-in weapon system as an example, it primarily consists of a search radar, tracking radar, and the gun system. The entire system's combat functions are fully automated and operated by high-speed computers. The gun system is the famous M61 Vulcan. From detection to firing, the entire process takes approximately 4.3 seconds. When the target approaches the maximum effective range, the phalanx system begins firing. In the first two seconds, it fires around 140 rounds, which can be considered calibration shots. If the subsonic missile advances approximately 600 meters during this time, the remaining shooting process will implement closed loop firing, becoming more accurate with each shot until the target is destroyed. In most cases, when the phalanx system has fired approximately 200 rounds, the target is completely destroyed at a distance of 500 meters from the ship. With the accompanying armor-piercing discarding sabot rounds, the maximum firing rate can reach 6,000 rounds per minute, and the effective defensive range exceeds 3,000 meters. Although the 20 by 102 mm ammunition's power cannot be compared to the 30 mm ammunition used by South Korea, the crucial factor is that the MK-15 satisfies the high rate of fire requirement of a dense array. The ship-mounted MK-15 Phalanx close-in weapon system uses radar and electro-optical tracking systems, automatic servo systems, damage assessment systems, and target analysis systems integrated into one. Its response time is extremely short, which is one of the advantages of a phalanx system and one of its two core components. Regardless of the country's close-range defense weapons, as long as these two core components are top-notch, they will undoubtedly be the most effective. In the movie, the Russian missiles are launched from the shore, targeting the U.S. submarine near the harbor. This falls under the first stage of missile engagement. Intercepting missiles of such speed is no problem at all for a close-in weapon system capable of firing 6,000 rounds per minute. Let's switch perspectives and imagine ourselves as the attacking side, trying to overcome the dense firepower network of close-in weapon systems and successfully hit the target with missiles or aircraft. 
Currently, CIWS remains the primary close-range defense equipment on U.S. military and allied naval vessels. It is effective against non-supersonic anti-ship missiles, small aircraft, and armed helicopters. However, it becomes challenging to counter supersonic missiles. The challenge becomes even greater when facing hypersonic missiles. Therefore, we can conclude that supersonic missiles are one of the methods to breach CIWS. However, the problem is that before supersonic missiles can reach the CIWS, they need to penetrate the U.S. Navy's layered defenses, such as the Sea Sparrow and Ram. It is only after breaching these defenses that there is a possibility of hitting the target. The CIWS consists of projectiles, and its firepower relies on the turning of the launch platforms. On the other hand, supersonic missiles and intelligent ammunition intercept targets using a different approach, with a maximum range of up to 20 kilometers and more flexible interception methods. Besides relying on high-speed missiles, there is another method. The early CIWS used the VPS-2 radar, with a search antenna range of approximately 5.12 kilometers and a beam that covered the entire vertical area. The high-precision electronic beam can effectively detect anti-ship weapons and targets approaching from the horizontal and overhead directions. The United States later improved the radar detection system by replacing the original 2D scanning antenna with a new four-piece backplane antenna. The overall efficiency of the dense array was significantly improved, but it also brought new issues. For example, there is a blind spot above the CIWS, and according to available information, the improved Block 1 CIWS has a modified elevation coverage of minus 25 to plus 80 degrees. This means that the maximum elevation angle of the CIWS does not exceed 80 degrees. By now, it should be clear how to destroy a CIWS. Apart from supersonic missiles, this is the second potential method to breach the defense. However, this method remains theoretical because both vertically striking missiles and bombs dropped from above still need to penetrate the defenses of the Sea Sparrow or Ram missiles. This leads us to the second topic, whether the defense formed by Sea Sparrow and Ram missiles is more effective than a dense array composed of Gatling guns. In fact, both systems are considered short-range defense systems, with one launching 30mm caliber projectiles and the other launching missiles. The latter has a slightly longer interception range. The U.S. military has also considered replacing Gatling-styled CIWS with ESSM and RAM systems. For example, the DDG-82 to DDG-102 Arleigh Burke-class destroyers initially did not install Gatling systems, but the U.S. military later retained one phalanx system on the Burke-class. Why is this the case? It is because CIWS have a higher success rate in intercepting typical subsonic anti-ship missiles with a speed of 0.8 Mach. They have a 70% or higher interception probability, even against anti-ship missiles with serpentine or pop-up maneuvers. However, for supersonic missiles, the interception success rate of dense CIWS arrays is only 30% to 60%. When a supersonic missile breaches a warship's medium and long-range missile defense systems, it relies on the CIWS as a last resort. The need for the CIWS to open fire indicates that incoming missiles have already bypassed multi-layered defense systems like Aegis. This is the critical moment for the ship, and even if the missile is successfully intercepted, the explosion debris from the close-range missile can still cause casualties or damage to personnel and equipment. However, it is still preferable to being directly hit by the missile. Currently, the installation of close-in weapon system for ground-based facilities is relatively straightforward. The vehicles only need to provide power and do not require integration with vehicle combat detection systems to operate independently. The installation location simply needs to ensure structural strength. The CIWS can perform radar tracking and searching, target threat assessment, and timely target locking and firing. It complements defense systems at different distances and serves as the final line of defense.